Yeah, uh, my name is Torsten. I'm maintainer of the uh, Zephyr belt system. I come from Nordic Semiconductor, and I'm here to present the new hardware model and the system together with that. Um, so, and I can see we are a little bit late already, so let's just get going. So, a bit of history. So, why did we need a new hardware model in Zephyr? Well, those of you who have been with Zephyr for a long time has seen how it has been growing organically and also seen how it's been reaching its limitation, um, especially regarding boards, because everything is getting uh, defined as a Zephyr board, even though it's not really a physical board. Um, we get a very locked file structure where you have uh, the arch as part of the folder structure. Uh, if you needed board variants, you would be implementing that as a new board. Um, the SOC selection inside of a board was done as a choice, meaning that uh, newcomers to Zephyr could open menu config and they would see uh, hundreds of SOCs and it's like, can I change the SOC of this board? Well, no, you cannot. But that was how it was done and seen. Um, another limitation in the hardware model was that it was not reusable inside SysBuild. And I will get to that a bit later, but uh, it basically means that it's not, it makes it harder to scale uh, multiple images inside SysBuild. Um, a couple of examples where you see that uh, we have some boards and 9160 DK from Nordic, which was a dual SOC kit, and that is implemented as three boards in two different folders. A 5340, which is three boards uh, in one folder. A 54H20, which is three plus boards uh, of two different architectures, meaning they suddenly get in a boards arm and boards risk folder. And there are many other examples of this from different windows. So this is this is not really scalable and it's growing out of hands. So one thing with the hardware model V2 was to establish the new terminology and find out how do we want to actually address this. And at the same time, everyone uses the build system. This is so core, cool. so we will go out and be annoying each and every developer out there, each and every user of Zephyr all of a sudden need to adapt to a new terminology, a new way of addressing boards and describing the boards. So uh, how could we do this in a way that looks reasonable and that would be scalable in the future as well? So we went with a pattern that is very close, related to what a lot of vendors were already doing, by keeping the board itself and keeping the SOC in the board name, which were done by a lot of vendors already, and then having an NS variant or a variant at the end. So we already had an established pattern of using underscore NS for the non-secure boards. Those of you who are not familiar with the non-secure boards, the NS is the term we use when we in include uh, trusted firmware in the build and have a a non-secure variant and a secure variant of the build. Um, so the pattern that is now enforced is the you now have a dedicated board name, which is the first part. You might have a board revision if the board comes in multiple revisions, but it's not mandatory. So you can omit that part. Then we use slash as a separator and we have the SOC as the next part. And if that SOC has multiple cores, we refer to those as CPU clusters. Um, those will be coming afterwards. And then you can have additional variants at the end. Those can be software variants, but it may also be small variants uh, related to the hardware. Like if you have a board where you can have an additional sensor or you can enable that sensor or you adjust, uh, let's say, which RAMs you are assigning to the, the image, 
you can use that in the variant part. It's very flexible, the variant part, to kind of cover as many use cases that will come up out in the uh, community. The last part after the first slash is referred to as the board qualifiers, and the complete name here is the board target. And for many boards, this will look very similar with a underscore replaced by a slash. And if you use the old board name for some period, it should map you to the new board uh, terminology. So um, a bit of what I just described. So we have the board qualifiers, all of the additional tokens separated with the slash uh, and the board target. Yeah, I think I went through this. Um, so on the hardware model, we two features. Uh, one thing we wanted to avoid was this locked structure that we have in the hardware model V1, where everything is locked down under its architecture. Um, we wanted to make this more free where you wanted to place it, and then have guidance in the Cephir community or the Cephir repository, so that we have we enforce a certain structure there. So we enforce a structure of boards slash vendor. So Nordic boards would be under Nordic, boards Nordic, and uh, um, analog devices would be under analog, and ST under ST. Um, but of course, if you have out of three boards, you can use the structure you decide in your own project. Uh, this becomes reusable inside of SysBuild because the KConfig tree has been split in two parts. One part describing the SOC and the board, and another part describing the uh, Cephir parts with selection of uh, drivers and uh, selection of other KConfig settings that uh, you might want to have enabled for your board or you require by your board. Um, yeah, and then we have uh, made some common description in the YAML for the SOC, the CPU cluster, the variants, uh, series, families, uh, and those are placed in a board.yaml. And uh, this allows us to extend this um, in a nice way so we can introduce new features in the future. We will also be able to uh, more neatly allow people to extend a board out of tree by creating uh, new variants. So you can say, oh, I have this upstream board. I want to use that. I want to reuse it. And then I want to have my own variant of that with its special configuration. Um, I might need to enable additional sensors in that build and don't want to do that by constantly having to remember to apply certain overlays. You can do that in your own variant. We do have in the, in the code base today an option to um, extend board out of tree, but that is kind of overriding the board deal. And uh, this becomes more um, flexible in the way that you will still be relying on the upstream board. Um, and then we have support for the qualifier named conf fragments and device tree overlays, meaning that before, if you make, were using snippets or you were using uh, um, creating a sample, you can create a board.conf fragment or a device tree overlay based on the board name. But that only goes for that board. So if someone downstreams uh, creates a board of their own and uh, reuses an SOC from the Cephir tree, well, that will not be picked up because it's tied to the board. But with the uh, support for qualifier fragments and device tree overlays, you can actually name the overlay just according to the qualifier, the last part we saw, which included the SOC. And you can get it picked up even if the board is different. So uh, how does this look in, uh, for describing an SOC? 
Well, you this you have a common soc.yaml for your vendor, and there you can simply describe all the socks. You give them the name, you describe if there are clusters, that's a sequence of strings, uh, which family it belongs to, and the vendor. And then that can be used inside the board, which is described here as a name, a vendor. You can give it a revision that's optional. Um, and in that case, that's also one thing that we have cleaned up because revision was one of those small things that things are growing organically in Zephyr. So whenever there is a need, oh, I need revisions of boards, well, we make a small change, we adapt that, and that looks very nice. But at some point, all of those nice small additions just grows in complexity and makes it harder to understand. So we cleaned up that, so you can describe the revision here. You describe the, the SOCs that you have on this board. And as well, if you need variants, uh, you can describe those in addition. And if it is a variant of a CPU cluster, you need to tell it which CPU cluster this variant <coughs> applies to. So on the kconfig SOC, um, we cleaned up that part, as I just said. We have the kconfig.soc, which now describes only the SOC and should have no references outside of the hardware model v2, because this allows it to be reused inside sysbuild. If we start to depend on something which is in the other rest of this kconfig tree of Zephyr, or we have some selects that might break or give warning inside sysbuild. Um, but this part is uh, reusable and can be sourced, sourced by sysbuild or basically other tools. And we have uh, compliance checks for this. So if you start to add uh, and reference outside of the tree, uh, you should get a compliance error. Um, and then we have the regular kconfig, which can reference anywhere inside the Zephyr tree, like saying, um, depends on this driver being enabled, depends on SPI, um, depends on Bluetooth or whatever. And then we have the kconfig, the devconfig, which we know already. Um, and we have cleaned up the SOC selection, so that is done automatically now. Um, so you cannot change that. Um, anymore. It's prompt list. Um, so all of this, of course, sounds very nice, but what, what to do with this in practice and where does it benefit? Well, if you have ever worked with MCU boot and single image builds, uh, you know that each image must be built and flashed independently. And it requires you as a developer to keep the configuration in sync between the images. And it's easy to get wrong or, or forget to pass on a setting. I don't know how many of you have ever spent hours in getting MCU boot to work with a particular sample, but uh, it, it, that can be challenging sometimes. Uh, you might uh, choose a wrong offset for the header, you might uh, mistake forgetting the uh, signing key in one of the samples and so on, and your bot doesn't run. So this, uh, this issue, among other issues related to multi-image builds, led us to introduce SysBuild, and that is a short for system build. And what is a system? Well, that can be anything. It can be one board with two SOCs or multiple SOCs. It can be a board with a single SOC but multiple cores. In principle, it can be in future uh, multiple boards. Uh, we are not there yet, but uh, introducing the SysBuild as a first step and a foundation uh, allow us to in future expand uh, the usage. It's a top level CMake project, which can include other pr images. Um, it can configure parts of the uh, 
all of the images through sensorized k-config options. So in the sysbuild, you can say, okay, I want this k-config for MCU boot, and I want to propagate that to all my images. It can be extended um, in Cepheor modules and user application as you are used to. Uh, it's supported natively in Cepheor and thus works together with the uh, Cepheor tools like REST. Um, it should mostly have seamless change for applications building without the need of uh, multi-image. So you can use this build to still build a single image. Uh, it lives in the Cepheor repository and we are having uh, enhancements added to it. Like the, uh, there's a PR opened uh, related to uh, out of three extending a, an upstream board. So what are the benefits of using SysBuild? Um, well, it's easy to extend it and add extra images. Um, and it's usable inside our Cepheor and it's as well as downstream of Cepheor derivatives. Um, and we reuse existing Cepheor CMake code. So that's why it was not done as a completely independent tooling. Uh, reusing CMake allows us to reuse the existing CMake code in Cepheor. We have Twister support and we, have, we get a clear separation of ownership and boundaries. So the application are responsible for themselves and the SysBill is responsible for binding those images together. We do in tree today, most of it has been cleaned up, but we did have some uh, images or some boards which might uh, behind the scenes, create additional images that they would merge together. Uh, those are hopefully being cleaned up. Uh, and uh, yeah, we integrate this with other features. So the high level overview of this, when you use West build, or you can use CMake as well, is that you enter the sys build, and then you just def describe the main application you want to build. So that could be Blinky, it could be uh, heart rate, uh, uh, Bluetooth sample, or whatever you want. Um, and you just give it that main sample. And SysBuild will take care of the rest. It will find out, okay, do you want to enable MCU boot? Um, that could be specified in a conf file, but you can also specify that on the command line. Do you need to enable any extra images that are specified for this sample. It could be if you have a multi-core SOC, it might need an additional sample on one of the other cores, and then it will build those and create the runners for each of the uh, images. And if you then invoke West Flash, then it will flash to all the boards. Um, and you can, of course, still flash independently. Uh, so let's, uh, yeah, let's make a small example here. Oops. So let's see, I just take, a, is this too small? I think I'm on the run keyboard layout. Yeah. This should be bit better. So you see, we are just building hello world, no, uh, peripheral heart rate for a single image with a single board here. And we can then enable MCU board. And you see it will now build with MCU boot and with the peripheral heart rate for both bots. And those are now aligned uh, correctly in terms of offsets and signing keys. So, and if we take a look, if we want to go in, we can look at the menu config like we're used to. 
So that will open for the main sample if we do that. It will just open the regular sample. And we have a similar K config for SysBuild or menu config for SysBuild. So you can go in and configure each of them as you like. And each additional image that has been added will also get a menu config. But the regular menu config, as you know it, goes to the main app that you specified when starting the build. So all that is nice because we have given you MCU boot, um, we might give you some other images upstream, but how do you add your own image if you need to? Um, for that, you need to describe the image in kconfig. You need to integrate the image into SysBuild, and uh, you can control any required settings from SysBuild into the image. So if we take an example here, before hardware model v2, this will give you a hint of uh, the cleanup I described before, is that you tell here that, okay, I have a netcore board, and this is on a NIF53, and you see here that we have an NIF5340DK from Nordic, but we also have something called an audio DK, and users might create an a board of their own based on the same SOC. And here you see that, okay, I need to default to the CPU net if I'm building for this board. I need to default to another CPU net if I'm building for, the, for another board and so on. And all of this can be described in the application, but this is not really scalable. Um, instead, with the hardware model V2, we can now go in and look at the uh, SOC, because we have that available, and we can say, okay, I need to adjust this board, because I know that the, the uh, terminology of uh, hardware model v2 tells me that the SOC is on the second level, and the CPU net was the cluster variant. So if I'm on a NI5340 CPU app, I need to use the same board, and remember now, the board itself is the first part of the, uh, of the name, and no longer the, the whole board target. So I still use the same board, and I just adjust the qualifier from being a CPU app to be the CPU net, meaning that if a customer comes along the sample and wants to create his own board, he can do so and it will still work together because this SOC is the same and thus the CPU qualifier is also the same because that's defined by the SOC. And inside of CMake, we can see here that we can also in the app create a sysbuild.cmake which then integrates the application into SysBuild. So in order to activate this extra image, um, you, in this case it could be HCI IPC, you will check for the kconfig uh, and notice that usually we use config underscore something, but if it is a SysBuild setting, we prefix it with sb underscore config. So if this application has uh, SB config netcore image HCI IPC enabled, then we call an external Zephyr project add, telling Zephyr to use HCI IPC, and that sample is located at the Zephyr base on the Bluetooth HCI IPC. And that means we can then go out and build it. So let's see how that looks. Uh, So we can take a look at this one. So we just built for the 5340DK, and you see, oh, it just built one sample here. But that's not good because this is a 
dual core SOC. And in order to run Bluetooth on this one, I actually need to have Bluetooth. Uh, I need to have my sample uh, host on the application core, and I need to have uh, the Bluetooth controller on the network core. So we can take a look at how do we do that. So we go in and we have what I just described before. So we have the uh, CMake up here. And I've been cheating a little bit. So I have the kconfig down here that is ready to write. And you see, as I just presented before, I just default the, the board here. So let's write this file. And take a look. And you see we built the sample. And now we get ATI IPC enabled. So we get both samples, both for the application core and the network core. And if I build for the other board that we had just before, the uh, 52 board, which is a single core SOC, you will see that this one will still just build a single image. So this is all nice when it comes to enabling images. But what if I need to control the settings? What if I need to say that, okay, if I enable this in my sysbuild, because I want to ensure that when I enable MCU boot in, in sysbuild, I need to ensure that the, the right settings is enabled in my image, like the offset, or I need to ensure the signing key and the verification key comes from the same source uh, so that the key I use for signing my image matches the verification key used by uh, MCU boot. I need to provide it the same uh, key file to both images. I need to ensure that the user don't open menu config and change this setting accidentally or change the setting in the poi.conf. Um, I need to ensure that the it could be with the uh, heart rate, peripheral heart rate. I need to ensure that certain settings are not being adjusted by the application. So I want to control this from SysBuild. And for that, we have some extension functions, like a set config bool, where you can say, OK, for this image uh, and this setting, use this uh, value. And similar with the string. So a couple of examples here could be for this main CMake application, config bootloader MCU boot, and then give it the value uh, that was given to SysBuild, which would be yes or no. Also, so he doesn't go ahead and change his application and say, oh, this application uses MCU boot when you, in fact, uh, was using SysBuild without MCU boot. Uh, and those settings are being written to a .config.sysbuild. Now, the normal .config is the one used by Zephyr, but then .config.sysbuild is a sysbuild file that is pulled in together with your pry.conf and other config fragments and takes precedence over those. So if you specify something in sysbuild and you have configured it in sysbuild, well, that will win. And if the user tries to change it, he will get a warning and saying that this value was restored back to the value given by SysBuild. Uh, yeah, so where can I add extra images? And uh, we just noticed, saw that you can add those to a sample. But if you are having many samples and you want to have a common uh, image applied, like uh, MCU boot or in the example I just gave with HCI IPC, you can, you can also describe this in a Cephium module. 
So in your Cepheor module, just use syspl-k config and then give it a path to the uh, syspl dedicated kconfig file. And uh, similar with the syspl.cmake, give it the path to the cmake folder, then it will pick up the cmake list.txt from there and source those into the syspl uh, tree and use that. Or, so this, this allows you to provide, provide extra images, let's say in a hall or, or in your, your downstream uh, Cephyr by creating, a, creating your project as a, uh, and including that as a module, you can then describe this uh, for all your applications. Or you can do it in the board folder. So if you create your custom board, you can also in your board dir, uh, describe this in a kconfig.sysbuild or in the, uh, together with the sysbuild.cmake. So you can ensure that whenever you build for this board, you will have those extra images available. And then you can decide, of course, downstream, if those should be default configurable or if those should be always included in your build. Yeah, and I can see that I'm speaking much faster than expected. So we have catched up and have some time for questions if anyone have any or want to go back to get some more details on any of the slides. Yeah. Uh, I guess a lot of this work uh, was inspired by what, what you did in, with multi-image builds in the NRF connected prior to this. Like what, what are the sort of lessons learned from that prior work that you incorporated yeah, that's a, that's a good question and that's a long story, a little bit of history. So let's go back even before we did a downstream solution. Uh, because Nordic tried to provide and propose a multi-image solution upstream back in 1819, 19 I think. Yeah, I think it was 19. Um, but that that proposal was considered too intrusive to the build system. So we had to uh, take a step back at that time uh, and saying that, okay, and this again comes a little bit back to what Maureen was saying, start small with the PRs. That's always a good, good strategy. Um, but that one was considered too intrusive. So we had to take a step back and say, okay, we're not getting, getting multi-image support officially upstream in Cephyr. So we needed to find another solution that was uh, allowing us to have multi-image, but with a minimal amount of patching of Cephyr, because we all know that, well, you, that's one of the good things about Cephyr, it's open source, you can do your own patches, you can fork it, but you need to maintain that fork and you need to upmerge regularly and you need to adjust your patches to that. So it's much nicer to, to give this to the community for the community to use. But we had to, in that case, say we still need some multi-image support. So we went another direction which were, could be incorporated in a downstream fork but not being too intrusive into Cephyr but also has its limitations. And uh, some of the lessons learned from that, uh, we try to avoid with Sysbuild. Um, so that was part of the history lesson. So it's not because we never wanted to do this upstream. We actually tried the first try was to push a multi-image solution upstream. So as time went by, we could see that even though we had a solution and a working solution, it was not perfect. Uh, it has had its limitation. Sysbuild also have some limitation, but that's more because we have not reached the full level of what we want. Uh, but we have put down the foundation now and uh, taking the lessons we have learned from having a downstream multi-image solution uh, to say, okay, what is the core foundation we need for multi-image solution upstream in order to work and get an approve and has have a seamless integration into upstream like I just showed. You can still do a single image build with Sysbuild, no problem there. Uh, or you can do multi-image build. Um, so, and that is where Sysbuild started. Uh, and then it was kind of 
uh, a little bit I would not say stalled um, or hibernated, but it was like not having the same traction because after the first run, we wanted to get system device tree. We were very ambitious there. So we waited and said, okay, we want full integration of uh, device tree and system device tree uh, as part of this build. But unfortunately, that seems to not going to happen in the foreseeable future. So then we started to pick it up again and taking the next step with the hardware model V2 saying, okay, we're not getting system device tree now, let's continue with what we have and then try to follow up. Let's try to clean up the hardware model as a first step and continue from there and integrate that into Syspel and then slowly improving what we have there. So did that answer? Jonathan? Are there any plans to improve the integration between SysBuild and Trusted Firmware M? Uh, we, have some, uh, we have some wishes there, yeah, but we don't have any concrete plans right now because Trusted Firmware M is kind of doing it its own thing, but you can see that as a, as a kind of one of those under the hood multi-image builds as well. But there's no no real reason to go out and change just for a change because that will impact a lot of people. But it would also be nice in, uh, for some parts to maybe get that integration done a little bit differently because it is with t trusted firmware, it is a bit hard to make some of the adjustments into trusted firmware itself. Uh, it's not really because of Zephyr in that part, but it's also the way trusted firmware integrates to embed TLS, making it hard to kind of substitute the uh, embed TLS that TFM wants to use with your, that could be if you want another version of embed TLS or if you want to use another uh, library that, has, uh, that follows the same embed TLS API like uh, Oberon. It's a bit harder to integrate those with the with the TFM. Um, so it would be probably be if we could be cleaning up part of the integration there that could make it. if it supports overriding binary blobs on the... Yeah, so the question was, does this sysbuild allow overriding binary blobs on a board? Correct? Yeah. Um, well, the binary blobs as such um, is not supposed to, to be part of sysbuild per se. I think it's more, is it because some of the images or some of the samples are enforcing uh, uh, merging with a binary blob? Okay, so you want to integrate a binary blob with this build. Okay, then I better get the question. Yeah, I was more like, okay, was uh, this build was uh, because I know that there has been some uh, PRs at some point which wanted to always uh, merge a binary blob into or in include that as a C array, but uh, no, no. Okay, yeah. Well, um, in that sense, um, now we just saw that we were using external Cepheid project add, but with SysBuild you can actually call an external project as well. And then in that project you could uh, you could uh, tell it that, okay, I have this additional uh, hex file um, that you actually um, want to get flashed, so you create a runner for that. Then the uh, rest flash would flash it, but it would not merge it at this point. There you would need to do a different thing. And that was, by the way, one of the lessons we learned with NCS, because rest flash is always flashing a single hex. Um, and that's a problem when you then need to merge multi-core systems in order just to have them 
split again later because you cannot flash both calls at the same time in some systems. Uh, yeah, but that should be possible. It's a little on the edge, so I think it would be uh, appreciated if there are some more uh, generic solutions that could be upstreamed as an extension. Yeah. And yeah, let me just for everyone repeat, and this was more like, uh, is it possible to, or will it be possible to use a pre-built MCU boot on, in principle, if it's a more generic question, a pre-built image together with sysbuilt? And yes, this is one of the features we want as well. And this is one of the features we actually have in NCS where I can go in and say, use this pre-built image instead of uh, building it. So yes, that's one of the features that we are still lacking in SysBuild, but that we want to in include as well. You mean to convert an existing board to? Image, single image board. Uh, you mean the hardware model? Um, yeah, so it's already yeah. AGVM2, but um, so do you, do you need a uh, kconfig.sys build in uh, uh, build uh, if you If you place that in your board folder, yes, that, that will be sourced by sysbuild when you're building for that board. You can use SysBuild even if you don't have that. Okay. So, if we took a look at the... Uh, um, I don't assume there's any SysBuild folders here, you see? So, the board doesn't need to have a SysBuild folder. You can still just um, call SysBuild with that board. It only provides additional options to SysBuild. Uh, and that could be, we have some boards which are actually, um, which are describing additional settings for SysBuild. So we can take, we have an expressive board. We well, see that here they are actually defaulting their board to be using MCU boot. And they are defaulting the boot signature type to none. So if you are using this board and building it with SysBuild, it will per default include MCU boot. So that's also a way to adjust your board and say, okay, I want to always have SysBuild. Or I want to always use MCU boot with SysBuild. Thank you all for joining then, if there are no further questions. <laughs>